I want winners. I want people that want to win. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. You got to put your money where your mouth is, Pete. It's not gambling advice. Monday, July 11th. Welcome to Not Gambling Advice. I'm Peter Apple. That's Colby Olson, and that's Clay Snowden. And we're talking waiver wires and fantasy streamers, just like we do every Monday. But Not Gambling Advice is sponsored by Prize Picks. Thank you to Prize Picks for being the best sponsor in the world. Use code Just Baseball in order to get a full deposit match. If you are new to Prize Picks, it's MLB player props, it's DFS, and maybe some of the information that we give you here today can then help you on prize picks Colby I want to start with you because you started off the episode with saying I have some fucking fire that you're bringing in so I'm throwing over to you happy birthday by the way Colby turned what 24 23 years old 23 baby oh 23 it's my Jordan year um fired up dude I'm fired up for this episode because like I said I'm bringing some fucking fire today um there there is one player that I'm not gonna say yet should I just get into it because it, it, no, no, it, I got I got to ask my boy Clay if he's oh. equally as fired up right now. Clay, are you fired up too? No, because I just realized um, I turn twenty nine next month, and I just feel so old. And I, I, I I'm speechless right now. I, I feel so old. You're not too old. You're not too old. Once once you start getting into the sixties, then you can feel old. But 29, 23, 24, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Colby, you got something to say? Yeah, I was just gonna say, Clay, you're just gonna age like a fine wine, baby. Yeah. Every year you get wiser, every year you get a little smarter, a little cuter too. <laughs> and uh yeah. I'm a little well, bit worried because Clay, Clay is 29 years old, and we were talking about UV rays because Colby's looking like a warm chocolate chip cookie right now, and Clay literally didn't even know what that is. Clay, I'm calling you out right now. You're almost it's, 30. You don't know what UV is. What, what's going on? Uh, it's less embarrassing, actually, than I had a Zoom with Colby or a – I see, I don't even know what's called. A Google thing, whatever Google <laughs> Zoom is this week. And he told me, like, I put a different background on, and I couldn't figure out how to take it off. So I have this, like, cartoon background of a, of a uh, city skyline um, – I've never felt like more of a boomer, but hey, you know, I, it doesn't really matter because we're here to talk about fantasy baseball. And Clay, yep. we need your wisdom because Clay writes a great article on JustBaseball.com with all these different waiver wire pickups and pitchers to stream in fantasy. So go check that out. So Clay, I want to start with you because I want to end with Colby because he's going to give us just some heat. So Clay, go first, but instead of talking about pitchers first, let's talk about some waiver wire additions because you listed out four and it's funny when you said, all right, these are my four for the week. I already said, well, one of those is already mine. So we're on the same page and you know who that is. So I'm going to start with you. Who are some of the waiver claims that you're really looking at? And then we'll go to me and then we'll go to Colby so we can just yell into the mic. <laughs> yeah, my, my waiver claim is Nick Senzel. And being a Reds fan and covering the Reds in some fashion since 2019, Nick Senzel was supposed to just be this breakout star who would help lead Cincinnati into their first, you know, real contention window in years. And it just hasn't worked out like that. Injuries over injuries over injuries have really held him back. And he's finally coming into his own. And I wrote an entire article about him this past week with with pretty graphs and nice videos that you all can check out on just baseball.com. But to summarize in a very simple ter- term, he's hitting the ball hard. I mean, he is crushing the ball right now. Um, season stats, 262, 318, 337, three home runs, five stolen bases, 82 WRC plus that WRC plus about two weeks ago was in the fifties. Um, he's really killed it over the past month, 325, 387, 422, with three stolen bases and two home runs. In that article I wrote, you'll see video of all of these outs that are inches away from home runs. 395 plus foot outs. He's starting to square the ball up. He's looking more comfortable. The launch angle has been a bit of an issue for him. Um, But, you know, if you're hitting the ball right and hitting it hard, you know that that's how you extend into, into extra base hits. So I think he's right on the cusp of turning those loud outs into home runs and extra bases. And, you know, he's actually a bad base runner, um, but he has elite speed. So he has been able to steal a a couple of bags Um, with him getting on base more. It could could help you in that category just a little bit. 
And he does have five stolen bases at that point. I feel like people forget Nick Senzel was drafted second overall out of the University of Tennessee back in 2016. And you're right. He's in the 82nd percentile sprint speed, but it's only resulted in five stolen bases. But right now he's got a 318 on base percentage. You expect that to tick up. But overall, you know, he doesn't whiff that much. He doesn't chase that much. You know, he doesn't walk a ton. But overall, I think he has a good plan at the plate moving forward. So he's a guy that I do like. He's not going to win you some weeks, but I think he can fill in rather nice um into a fantasy lineup because i think he does do a lot of things at least decently well you know he's not gonna hit 30 home runs but he's gonna hit some home runs he's gonna steal some bases the batting average is not gonna kill you and a uh, great thing about nick senzel he gets to play in great american coors which at this point is just a better ballpark than coors field and he gets to play there colby you're smiling you like great american coors I love that. I love that name, dude. It, it, it is an absolute launch pad. I, I refuse to take any pitchers that are pitching in, in that ballpark these days. Even today, Shane Boz getting absolutely lit up. But I think Senzel is intriguing because he does have a good batted ball profile. He hits a lot of line drives. Um, and I think some of those, some of those, you know, balls that are just missing leaving the yard will start leaving the yard. And um, I think it's just a high average guy. Clay, what I do want to ask you, is there a chance that he gets moved up in the order at all? I see him kind of now that Jonathan India is back. He was sitting in the leadoff spot while India was hurt. Um, now he's in the seven, eight, nine spot. Is there a chance that he, you know, if he keeps sitting, he moves up? Yeah, yeah. Um, not only will he move up, but the hitters in front of him are not too impressive. And post deadline, it could be even worse. So I think he'll be able to move up closer into that I don't know if they'll bat him like Play. In, in the two I, hole or if they're bat him in five six or I feel like they're going to move him into the two hole because Brandon Jury's as good as gone yeah yeah and, and that I guess that's exactly what I'm trying to say is once they trade off players somebody's going to have to fill those holes I would like to see him in a two hole especially against left-handed pitching where throughout his career even with all of his struggles he's hit left-handed pitching well um, Jonathan India did home run to hit, hit a home run today, uh, today being Sunday when we're recording. Um, but overall, man, he's kind of struggled since coming back from injury. So um, I think since I will make that move up the lineup sooner rather than later. And that's good for fantasy baseball purposes. Let's break into mine, which Clay is also co-signing. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Two of the guys are on it. And I think after Colby listens, it's going to be hard not to love this guy too. That's Ramon Laureano of the Oakland A's. If we're talking about Nick Senzel moving up in the lineup because of Brandon Drury, let's talk about who Ramon Laureano could go to because right now he's playing in an enormous ballpark. And he didn't start off that great right he started off with the PED suspension and he's known as a glove first guy but this guy has been a better hitter than I think a lot of people give him credit for and over the past two weeks he's been very good and over the past week over the past seven days he's got a 611 slugging this is a guy in Ramon Laureano who even though has struggled so far this season still has a 900 OPS against lefties still has eight stolen bases with six home runs with a 735 OPS and we know how much hard it is to play in Oakland. And that's the big thing. This guy is one of the most likely candidates to get moved. You take him out of an Oakland lineup that is just awful. And you put him, let's say, in a Phillies lineup, who would be the perfect match for him. There's a lot of other teams that we could go over where Ramon Laureano could go. But just because he's hitting right now, of course, you should just pick him up because I still think he's a good option in Oakland. But what I'm so excited for him is to get put into a lineup that is consistently driving in runs. So those run scoring opportunities, those RBI scoring opportunities are only going to tick up. And just the general vibe of Ramon Laureano, for the lack of a better word, will tick up when you're just not sitting in a ballpark where eight people go to the games and you're not really motivated to play well because you know that your team's not going anywhere and you know that you're going to get traded. You put a Ramon Laureano in a playoff type of atmosphere, I think he's only going to get better. So he is a guy I'm definitely targeting. And when I saw that he's only owned in 11% of ESPN leagues, are you kidding me right now? I added him. Colby, you just Only did that 11%. Because well, he's 38. Check my math. He's, he's 38% owned in Yahoo leagues, which is crazy. That That's a crazy gap. Crazy gap. 11% owned in ESPN leagues as we're recording right now. Tell me how much you love Ramon Laureano Clay. And sorry, I, oh, my bad. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. I, I think you pretty much covered everything. 
Um, the only thing I would be weary of of Luriano is if he's traded. If you're trying to acquire him or picking him up because you see he's stolen eight bases this year and you think, okay, that's the category I need most help in, we don't know how much he's going to run on the new team. Um, the A's have been letting him run a little bit. Um, he, he obviously has that profile, but you never know when you get a new manager and a new system, a new scheme, a new game plan. Um, but the bat's going to play. And I've, I've always been a fan of him. You've got to remember with this suspension, not only did he get started late, but he kind of had to do the first couple weeks of more or less spring training. Um, he, he had a brief stint in the minors to kind of help him get up to speed. But I really like everything that I've seen from him. Even I just picked him up in my 10 man league. And I, if he's only available in 11%, which I was surprised of ESPN leagues, I'm sure that's going to jump high. This Definitely. Week. Definitely. Colby. Well, first of all, the Yankees would have been a good fit for him, but Aaron Hicks has decided to go ballistic the last week. The boos have stopped and Aaron Hicks has, you know, fended off Ramon Laureano. But yeah, Pete, I really like Laureano as well. Um, He's kind of, you know, become his best self this year. He's cut his K rate down. He's putting the ball in play a lot. The steals, I agree with Clay. He's been caught four times. So he's eight for 12 right now, which isn't going to cut it if you're on a good team, right? I think Clay's right. The the A's are just letting him run because what else are they going to do? They're going (laughs) to lose. Ramon, you can go run whenever you want. But really, really good pickup here. I think in in even 10-man leagues right now, he's a really good option, especially in run production. Man, Even on the A's, he has 27 runs in 55 games. If he goes to a better lineup, that could skyrocket. Because to your point, he's not the greatest base stealer, so in that category, but he is very fast. And yes, eight stolen bases out of 12, that's really not going to cut it. I don't know how much longer they're going to be letting him run. Like, let's say they go, he goes to the Phillies. But then again, the Phillies could kind of use that base stealing threat when we look at their lineup. So I'm just imagining him on the Phillies because he makes so much sense there. So it's going to be dependent on which team. But overall, even if he doesn't steal a bag for the rest of the season, he has good power. Like I said, he's going to score those runs on this new team, but he's already scoring them with the A's, which makes you me much more confident. And then the RBIs as well are going to tick up. And he's also, when I'm just looking at batting average, that's the area where he's never really been that good, right? This year, he's hitting 242. Last year, he hit 246. I mean, he's in 2019 where he hit 288. But again, he had a PED suspension. So I would expect him to sit within the 240 to 250 range. But it is good to see at least his expected batting average is 254. Colby, who's your streamer? Or who's your waiver wire pickup? And I'm, I'm fired up about this one, man. I, I really, this was a guy that I gave out three to four weeks ago as a guy to put on your watch list. And he really hasn't, you know, been picked up yet. It really hasn't hit his stride yet. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet though. I like it. And I'm going to give you a player a and a player B comp because this one's wild, man. So player a, this is the player who we are picking up is he had a 12% K rate and walk rate in the minor leagues this year in triple a with a two ninety six ISO. And so for anyone out there that doesn't know ISO it's isolated power, basically It counts doubles, triples, and home runs. It shows you your, you know, extra base hit potential. So this guy is a power beast. This year in 11 games, in 45 plate appearances at the MLB level, he was just called up recently. He has a 13% K rate, a 15% walk rate, and a 57% hard hit rate. I mean, this is a profile to dream on, right? Player B has a 10% K rate this year an 11% walk rate, and a 294 ISO. He's one of the best players in all of baseball. Player B is Jose Ramirez, Peter, and Clay. I do it. I do it. I know who player Jose, A is. Do you want to guess who player A is? Is it Vinny P? It is Vinny Pascantino. And while Vinny Pascantino is not going to steal 30-plus bases like Jose Ramirez is, Vinny Pascantino has the potential to hit 35 home runs to be a hundred RBI contributor. I mean, this, these signals, the 12% K rate and walk rate in triple a, and now it's translating to, to the big leagues already with a 57% hard hit rate. This guy hasn't, you know, heated up yet, but he is about to heat up. He's owned in 22% of leagues. 
And I really believe that this isn't a guy that you need to pick up in just 12 man leagues. This is a guy that you need to run to even in 10 man leagues, because while he hasn't blown up yet, he's going to be locked into the cleanup spot for the Royals here soon. This guy is going to be a future star. I think Uh, people might have a little bit of Colby. You just compared him to Jose Ramirez. And that seems crazy on the surface, right? Because Vinny Pascantino at the end of the day is hitting 154 and he hasn't gotten going yet. But what we do in the show is predict future success. And Vinny Pascantino has been one of the best hitters in the minor leagues for a little while now. It's going to take him a little bit to get going. Maybe you don't have to pick him up. No, oh, don't talk, even say that. I'm challenging you on that talk because he talk already is had it going, man. A 57% hard hit rate, right? You no, can get I'm a lucky fantasy baseball at the end of the day. For sure, for sure. Yeah. But he has a 424 X Woba compared to a 292 Woba. I mean, yeah. his batted ball profile is the most beautiful thing I have seen. Like I said, it, it literally translates to Jose. All Ramirez. I was doing was looking at the results so far. That's all I was doing. That's no, all I'm, I'm challenging you. No, you. I'm not letting I, you. Know, I'm not I will letting. say... The last time that Colby was this confident in a young player when I was on the podcast, I remember is Spencer Strider. And that worked out really well for, for Colby. So you know what? I I will back whatever you say about Vinny P. He was picked up in my 10 man league immediately. I think certain people understand exactly what you're seeing. The general public may not see it yet, but it's right there. And I know Aram's been talking about him for well over a year. Um, I, I'm just excited that Carlos Santana finally got out of town to give him at bats. Yeah. Jeez. And I, um, so Vinny P is a first baseman only, right? And can I give just one quick other player for people that might need a third baseman? Um, another rookie, actually, Spencer Torkelson, right? Also 22% owned. He's kind of post hype at this point. He got off to a really, really slow start to the season, but he has a 43% hard hit rate since June 1st. He's hitting a ton of line drives. The launch angle is there. It, it's just, I think, a tough home ballpark for him. So a lot of these balls are not getting out of the ballpark. Um, but he has a 20% K rate over the last you know month. And I think the approach is starting to come together. He's seeing the ball better finally. Um, so if he actually has third base eligibility. So that's why I bring him up. If you need a third baseman, um, I think he's actually a really interesting target because I think over this next month, um, you know, second half, he's going to have a big second half. Love that. Love that as well. And he's a guy who could potentially we could be looking at on prize picks as well. Remember, use code just baseball in order to get a full deposit match on prize picks every single day around. Normally, it's around 2.30 to 3 p.m. Eastern. But when we have early games, make sure you're following me on Twitter at PeterApple23 because I host a live Twitter space for about an hour, hour and a half. And we come together as a baseball community to get the best player props in order to play on prize picks. And if you want to tag along with us, might as well get some free money to do so. Use code just baseball and you get a full deposit match on prize picks. Clay, I'm going to throw it over to you to start our fantasy pitching segment because we have some streamers this week. Normally, I like to go with guys who have two starts in a week. Depending because, you know, they pick their best start and I'm a guy who you just need points, let's say a points league and you have no, you know, some people play points leagues where you can have as many pitches as possible. So I like to find guys that have two starts in a week. But for me, um, I decided I wanted to go with one guy who's pitching on Thursday. But Clay, I'm going to throw it over to you because I really didn't find any guys who were having two starts that I really did like. So I'm targeting a lefty against the Pirates. Clay, who's your fantasy pitcher? Okay, before we get into that, I just want to say prize picks. Peter does a great job, but you better come prepared. I mean, I jump in there just thinking, oh, I'm going to listen to Peter talk gambling. They're talking about wind direction and whatnot. I mean, they will teach you and walk you through the pro- their thought process of how to become better gamblers. But man, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. And he'll, he'll you know, throw the mic over to you and you can talk. So it's, it's a fun place to be. That, that's what I want to focus on too, because it's not just me giving up picks. If I came, you know, I could probably hit three of five, right? And the great thing about prize picks is you don't lose all your money if it's three of five, or I might hit four or five, which you would still two X your money. That's what's so great about prize picks. Instead of, you know, you parlay them on a fan duel. And if you go four or five, you're just going to lose because it's a parlay, not on prize picks. That's why it's been so fun. And then if you hit all five, you 10 X your money. But the great part about it is I bring my best pick. Clay brings his Colby brings his or whoever around the baseball community brings their best pick. And we have much more likely to hit that rather than me trying to put together five clay. Let's start with you. 
who's your pitcher that you're streaming this week in fantasy baseball? Yeah, so I have a one streamer to mention, and then I have another watch list to mention. I know I'm kind of breaking the rules there, but my streamer, those of you on YouTube can see I'm wearing my beautiful Minnesota Twins shirt today to talk about everyone's least favorite pitcher, Dylan Bundy. Dylan Bundy, July 16th against the White Sox is my streaming option. 24.6% owned. There's a reason why it's low. Stats, 450 ERA, 1.26 with 70 innings, only 53 strikeouts. I know what you're saying. You're saying I've had Dylan Bundy before and he blew up. I hate this guy. He's not good. That's fine. You're not wrong. However, that's fine. You're not wrong. <laughs> the past four starts, 1.88 ERA, 16 strikeouts, only four walks. His last outing was against the White Sox, the team I'm picking him to go up against this week. In that outing, five innings of one run ball was six strikeouts. The only other time he faced the White Sox this year, five innings, no run ball. Listen, there's a lot of issues with the White Sox, the roster construction, the manager of choice, a lot of issues. Their biggest issue is Dylan Bundy. And Clay, you know I'm the splits god, so I like to play the splits, home road splits. And Dylan Bundy is, by God, terrible on the road. Just awful. But at home, he can deliver you a good start. And he will be at home in this start. And, and to your point, you said his last start, he's actually, as we're recording, he's pitching right now on the road against the Rangers who have been really hot, but has, hasn't pitched that bad. I mean, not great because it's Dylan Bundy on the road, but five innings, six hits, four earned runs, and he's still pitching in this ball game too. So it's actually kind of a better start than a lot of would imagined. And again, and against a guy like Dane Dunning, who is a sell. If you like Dane Dunning, I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm not a Dane Dunning guy on Twitter. He's the most popular guy ever because you know, it's a Rangers guy. He's consistently undervalued, but he's undervalued for a reason because he's not that good. But that's just me. Anything else on Dylan Bunny? Because I do like him against a team that he's dominated at home instead of on the road. Yeah, I would just love to throw it over to Colby and let him roast me. No, I actually love this one because Dylan Bundy was a guy that a lot of people were dreaming on back in the 2020 season when he put up a 3 2 9 ERA. And we, he really did figure something out that season. The slider is a really impressive pitch for him, 43% whiff rate. Um, the changeup is starting to get it come together for him. I think when he continues to mix it up and not rely heavily on that fastball, he can succeed. Um, and again, I, I think there's a lot of good pitchers. Obviously, there's a lot of good pitchers in baseball, but there's a difference between guys that can pitch against good teams and guys that can just dominate bad teams. And I think Dylan Bundy is a guy that just dominates bad teams. And so you can target him and he can look like an ace against bad teams, right? It's Dylan Bundy. He's still a good pitcher, just not against good teams. Just that distinction of like, he's good against bad hitters, but against what you got good hitters. It's a One more thing. Look at the White Sox splits against righty versus lefties. They eat left-handed pitching which makes their overall stats look much better, more pedestrian numbers against right-handed pitching. And of course, I mean, we're talking about Dylan Bundy here. Like I'm not saying he's going to go out and throw a shutout or anything, but sometimes you just need a start to get you by. But that might be the upside. He did go recently eight innings, one earned seven Ks against the Diamondbacks. I'm telling you, this guy is like an ace against bad teams. (laughs) I love it. Let's talk about my pick now because we're going back into the well. Colby gave this guy out, and if you haven't picked him up yet, Thursday could be an interesting start for him. It's Braxton Garrett of the Miami Marlins facing the Pittsburgh Pirates. And what do we know, people, about the Pittsburgh Pirates? They're young, they're fun, and they're exciting, but the only problem with being young and fun and exciting is that you strike out a lot. Jack Sawinski, O'Neill Cruz, a lot of these hitters in their lineup, especially lately, have been strikeout machines Braxton Garrett is at his best at home and the Pittsburgh Pirates when I look at since June 1st they have about a 90 WRC plus as a team against lefties that ranks them about 23rd in baseball when we continue to shorten that sample let's just say the last month we're recording on July 10th June 10th that drops to about a 77 WRC plus. And then when you take out just in general against lefties and you look at them on the road, because Braxton Garrett will be at home, it drops to even worse around a 71 WRC plus with a strikeout rate, almost at 31%. That's the highest in baseball during that span. What I'm going to do 
is more than likely that's going to be an early game. You're going to see me on the Marlins in that game. I think Braxton Garrett comes out with a win. I think it's hard to get him a quality start because Braxton Garrett doesn't go through the third time of the order much. That's the only pitfall there. But this is a game most likely I will be not gambling on. As in, you know, you, we know what I mean. That's what I'll be doing there as well. as so I just like, I like him to get a bunch of Ks, especially at home, Pittsburgh not that team against lefties and the strikeouts. It's not that they just aren't hitting. It's that they have the highest strikeout rate in baseball over the last month. And in the past two weeks, I'm loving Braxton Garrett against the pirates. 1% owned in ESPN leagues. One pick him he was up. My streamer. He was my streamer exactly. over the weekend against the Mets and barely missed a quality start. He went five and two thirds, three earned runs, three strikeouts, but only three hits and one walk. Really good whip there. It was a great outing for him. I was New York really Mets, and he was in City Field versus at home against the Pirates too. And he still pitched that well. That's just credit to you. I mean, he pitched that well yep. in City Field against the Mets, who haven't hit lefties that well. But then again, it's the Mets at at City Field. So the Pirates have the third worst uh, WRC plus against lefties this season. They just don't hit lefties and. What I do want to touch on real quick, dude, is both of you need to go watch on the Just Baseball Twitter account right now and go watch the home run that O'Neill Cruz just hit because this might be one of the most insane home runs I've ever seen, man. He took a half swing and hit a ball 410 feet. It was like what? a check did that swing. in high school all the time. That's not impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I did. I want to get your live reactions to this because it, it, it's insane. Dude, that is so unfair. That was like like a good pitch on the edge of the zone too, on the outside edge of the zone. I mean, I don't think that that's like a the a only ball that just you know lost that looked like he popped it up. Like it was of one of those it. where he popped it up to the catcher, but it, instead it went four twenty. <laughs> the only people that can do that are Stanton, Otani, and O'Neill Cruz, and the just freakish ability at the plate. So that's it. Oh Braxton my Garrett's going to strike him out though. Braxton Garrett's going to strike him out. Who's your yeah, pitcher that you want to stream this week in fantasy baseball? Yeah, I got a fun one here. I'm I'm just sticking on the prospect grind. That's just Love that's it. just I chase upside. Vinny P, Spencer Torkelson, and now I'm bringing my guy Brian Bello, the top prospect for the Boston Red Sox. He got roughed up in his first major league outing. He went four innings, four earned runs, three walks, two Ks. I'm not putting too much weight into it because his numbers in AAA were just ridiculous he had a 34 percent k rate he was getting a 63 percent ground ball rate he he has the highest upside right there right now on the waiver wire and so he gets the raise again he gets the raise again but the reason i'm not putting too much weight into that first start is because there was so much glitz and glamour i don't think that he was really on his routine the same routine that he would be in the minor leagues or just you know, he's doing all these interviews. There's a lot of pressure, you know, pitching in Fenway. This is the the most hyped up Red Sox prospect, I believe, since Pedro Martinez. I really can't remember another Red Sox top Josh pitching Winkowski. prospect. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Is, who has performed pretty well. But so he gets the raise again. They just lost Wander Franco, who's going to be out with a wrist injury. And um, I believe that Brian Bell is going to bounce back in his second start without all the expectations this time, right? He can just get his normal five-day rest, not have to travel from AAA to Fenway and just have all the eyes on him. He can just go down to Tampa, pitch a quality start, six innings, seven Ks, two earned. That's what I'm predicting. Brian Bellows starts tomorrow. Starts tomorrow on Monday so or today. So I think he starts this week. That could be a two-start guy. Yeah. And I no, don't he's not take. because he gets the Yankees next weekend. So absolutely not. Drop him. <laughs> I like that pick a lot, and it has a lot more to do with the Rays than anything um they're pretty terrible right now they're as we speak they're losing 10 to 5 to the cincinnati reds and if that score holds they would get swept by the cincinnati reds you can't have Yu chang starting every day for you at second base you i mean they're not making the moves right now they they, they just brought in christian bitten court from the a's who's like a backup catcher as in places 2017 like I don't know what this team's doing right now, but the Rays are looking like a pretty mediocre team. Taylor Walls is getting too many at-bats. Fidel Bruhan is as well. Um, so I, I like where your head's at there, Colby. 
appreciate I have to admit, I winced slightly when you said that. And the only reason is because of the familiarity back to back. But then I thought to myself, he's going to make the adjustments because he just faced this lineup too. And when you're the Rays, when you already beat up on him, you tend to kind of stick with the same game plan. And you know that Bayo is going to come in with a different one. I'm just concerned about the familiarity aspect. And then you're going to have to drop him, of course, when he faces the Yankees. But at the end of the day, he still could turn in a good spot start. I'm interested to see him again on the road. It's just, it feels a little risky to me. It could be boomer bust, basically. Yes. And I think it absolutely is boomer bust. It's a cherry bomb play, but I'm chasing upside early in the week because that could change the whole week. I think you can you can like claw your way back the rest of the week if it blows up in your face, but really this could be a weak winner. And the great thing is, Colby, that he could give up 30 runs because Vinny P is going to make it up for you on offense. That's what we do know. So, you know, are you shaking your head as if like no yes. shit? <laughs> Absolutely. It. Exactly. It's not even a question. I love it. And that will do it for this episode of Not Gambling Advice. Clay's got one more thing before. I, I do have one more thing. Sorry, I should have said this earlier. Um, When you look at the waiver wire article tomorrow, you will notice two really, really interesting names, both owned in less than 2.5%. I want to mention them on the podcast because I feel like we picked some percentages, especially as Colby mentioned, y'all who are a little bit higher. So I don't want give you to get one. Out of don't here. give us the other though, because they got to go read the article. Give us one. Right. right. And, well, and I'm going to tease out. the other one. Yeah. I like it. So the one that I'll tease is a reliever who is in the 95th percentile or higher in eight categories on baseball savant and owned in 2.5 or less percent of leagues with a 14 K per nine. This is a pitcher on an MLB roster right now. You all are going to want to check that one out. The one I'll mention for you is owned in 0.6% of leagues. And that is, I'm going to do my best Colby here. I'm going to go with a prospect DL hall in triple a of the Baltimore Orioles needs to be scooped up in deep leagues, especially if you need strikeouts. I think he's going to start the second half in the rotation, if not right out of the gate soon thereafter. Um, If you just pull up his ERA like a clown and only go off that in AAA, that 4.29 ERA, don't do that. Look at the FIP, 3.53, and look at the 15K per nine. On his July 1st outing, complete game, nine innings pitched, 14Ks, one hit. This guy is lethal, and he's incredible, and he's going to come up to Baltimore Join that in- incredible swagger that team has had, and he's just gonna he he's, he's disgusting. I, I really My think comp. he's a high high upside because of the K numbers. Um, so if if you're struggling with K's in your league, and instead of streaming Dylan Bundy, you want to pick up DL Hall, just wait on him. DL Hall is gonna be Dylan Cease from the left side, just a guy that strikes everyone out. He's gonna walk the house but he's not going to give up many runs because he can strike guys out 38% strikeout rate in triple a. The other guy that you're teasing, not dropping the name, he has a 40% K rate and a 6.8% walk rate this year as a reliever. That's crazy. Go check out that article right now on just baseball.com. As you are listening to this, as well as use our code, just baseball in order to get that full deposit match on prize picks. That'll do it again for this episode of Not Gambling Advice. We will be back on Wednesday. We're going to keep live betting. We're going to keep doing a bunch of stuff in fantasy baseball as well. But we're teasing. Unfortunately, the the trio is breaking up. Not really breaking up because we're still going to be jumping on each other's podcasts. But Colby and Clay are going to be doing more fantasy baseball stuff while I'm going to transition to talk more about gambling. It is not gambling advice at the end of the day with the podcast being all about gambling. It is kind of interesting. But Colby and Clay are going to start the Just Fantasy Show, which is going to be phenomenal. That is coming in August. So get ready. Check out those articles on justbaseball.com. And with that, thank you, everybody.